I know there's a lot of affection. Um, at the same time, you know, we live in a world where there's a lot of entertainments and a lot of movies and a lot of plays and a lot of musicals. And Beauty and the Beast seems to really engender this, this, this affection for people that is, is great. I, I've had that a number of times in my career where you just look and you go, huh, look at this. Well, I think, first of all, as far as the story, it's, it's deeply romantic. And it's, it's, got, it's got so much mystery and emotional texture in it. Uh, and so much period in it. And um, I think it's rich in that way. And I, you know, I'd like to think that uh, the approach that we took in, in our original score is something that really, really intrigued and tickled people. And, and they have grown very emotionally attached to it. It was really the, the contribution of Bill Condon as the director that was essential to me getting to those, uh, so those new song moments. Um, because I, it was a collaboration. He, as a director who's also a book writer, knows and has a vision of where he wants the movie to go. We want to establish you know, more of the French, more of the 18th century, more of the backstory. Thus, the, the music box number, which, you know, um, how does a moment last forever? And the new Beast song, which moves us to, a, to another place with, with the Beast going up the, the, the turrets of the castle, watching Belle go far off to the distance. And this lullaby, for, you know, where, where each of the objects and the Beast and Belle are, are remembering the days before the spell, days in the sun. They all felt organically important and good moments, ones that hadn't been, hadn't been dealt with in earlier incarnations. And um, look, if they hadn't worked, we would have written something else, but it, they did work. And, um, it, you know, it's, it's, all, it's all in process. And that's, that's, you know, what it's all about for me is the process. Well, it was, it, was, it was wonderful, and it was a little terrifying for them. They were both, I think, you know, um, a little bit uh, nervous about coming in the studio and, and singing. It was a very vulnerable feeling, um, which always surprises me, because I was thinking, you know, if I had to act, I'd be, I'd be terrified. Um, and then the rest of the cast, of course, are mostly pros in musical theater. Uh, it was a great combination, and, and they're all such good actors, and that's really what's most important. It's going back to a, a, an, an older era, a more nostalgic era, like the MGM musicals of the 40s, and uh, uh, so it's it's great to be able to bring this this art form to film and then sort of like meld it into something even bigger. Cinema absolutely has the ability to sort of extend and broaden the scale of the of, of the scope of reach, you know. And so, you know, for kids who don't necessarily get a chance to go to musicals, you know, either on the West End or Broadway, we can have them right there and, you know, in their silver screen, you yeah. know. Well, it's a classic story. It's, it, it touches, you know, down to the essence of what is what is most human about us, which that's our, our soul, you know, and that the soul is what is most important and, and to look within and to be, um, to love who you are and to love past the look and the facade. What is inside is what's most important. That's, that's a timeless sort of moral, it's a timeless lesson to learn. When you're making a film like this, of course, I, I think you do think uh, about the generations to come. I know for me, one of the reasons in signing on to do the, the film was because I have children of my own, and, and hopefully they'll be proud of the work I do. They're more excited about meeting and, and the fact that I'm in a film with Emma Watson. But <laughs> uh, nonetheless, you know, you hope that it, it continues to touch generations to come. So uh, not only other generations, but my children and my generations as well. I think Beauty and the Beast uh, has, a, has an incredible message that you can take into your everyday life, which is to like, uh, uh, never judge a book by its cover. Always look, look past uh, the, the physical appearance into the soul. The soul is what's most important. Yeah. It's never a question of improving. It's just sort of doing an entirely new production in a new medium, really. When, when you translate something into live action, it means that, you know, you've got to approach the characters differently. You know, Gaston and LeFou, which are, they're hilarious in the animated film, but those people don't roam the earth, you know, the, the punching bag, you know, that LeFou is, for example. So you want to take all that stuff and translate it into something that is both real, uh, to a degree, obviously, within the realm of fairy tales and also uh, more contemporary. If you're gonna make a real movie, 
Mrs. Potts has to be real. She, she doesn't, you don't want her to feel animated. There's no point in doing that, you know. But I do think finally we're at the point where technology allows us to do that. I never cast anybody because they looked like the animated character, although it was weird when Gaston, when Luke pulled on that Gaston drag, suddenly it was like, oh my God, it was like an animated cell come to life, you know? But it was, and you know, the characters again, because they're, they're in a live action format, they, they've got, they're, they're all different, you know? Um, Dan Stevens, for example, the beast in the original movie was illiterate, you know, and Dan is a highly sophisticated man, and a lot of that is reflected in the movie that we made. For me, I saw that animated film when I was um, an adult, you know, and it really appealed to me. I saw it several times, you know. So you just want to make sure that it's speaking to everyone, because I do think it is as much a grown-up story as it is for kids. I think that reminder that we need, you know, often, uh, that, you know, to, to kind of take a step back, uh, look closer, dig deeper, you know. Uh, don't just stick with the surface, because these days we're, there are a lot of pretty surfaces to be distracted by. From Christmas onwards, really, um, it's been building and seeing it in that big theatre. There's nothing mm -hmm. like it. My responsibility to my childhood self, who loved this book and this fairy tale, and uh, read this to my children so many times, and you know, the number of times we've enjoyed the animated film as well. And I just, you know, we just we made it with such love for the original. Classic fairy tales have timeless messages in them, and I think every generation that comes to them finds something different in them. And, you know, they, they bear retelling. That's the mark of any great story. You know, you can, you can you know, watch a movie that's very impressive, but maybe not want to revisit it. But, you know, these movies are loved so much. Very often that's just, you know, it's just a thought or a, or a feeling or something that you're trying to communicate through the beast. And actually the technology we used has brought such incredible sensitivity to the, you know, to the facial expressions of the beast. I'm, I'm delighted. I can't, you know, I can't believe what they've managed to do. And uh, yeah, the way that, you know, fairy tales have embraced this technology and vice versa is amazing. For my kids, it's, it's going to be their, you know, definitive version of Beauty and the Beast. They do love the animated version, but they, they loved coming on this set and they've loved watching this movie. And uh, yeah, it's pretty strange for them to watch Daddy as the Beast, I think. I've just found out that all the sort of trailery things have been very big, you know, so I don't follow all that stuff, but I, I'm very excited about it because I think it's a very good film and, and I think Emma Watson representing Belle in her feisty feminist way is just superb and deeply lovable and loving and uh, Dan Stevens is fantastic as the Beast, really fantastic. The cast is amazing. And I was only in it for a very short time, you know, because, because I'm a teapot for most of the time. Obviously, you know, crockery comes naturally to me. Um, but um, I, I, I only had like a couple, two or three days on it. But the time I had on it, I just thought, oh, can't we just do something else? Can we just, let's just do King Lear or something together. We had Ian McGellan, he could have done it. I get to sing the song, and I honestly, that for me, I rang Angela Lansbury, because she's a great mate, and I rang her and said, Ange, I've got to sing it, what am I going to do, because you're, how am I going to, you know, make it different, and she said, oh darling, she said, don't, she said, it's the song, just go and sing the song, forget about me, go and sing the song, It, need, it everyone needs to sing it every generation, she gave me such, she gave me such a pat on the, you know, she gave me a bit of confidence because I was a bit worried about it, but it was such a treat to sing it. They put in this enormous amount of work in order that it lasts, like, like Mary Poppins, like Singing in the Rain, like those movies that we grew up with that were designed to make you happy from beginning to end. You know what I mean? It's like, we, I love film. And, and I love watching film that, that, that is very deep and makes me feel differently about the world and about myself. But sometimes I really want to go and see a quality movie that makes me happy from beginning to end. And that, that's not very um, fashionable at the moment. So I'm very grateful. And our director, who's just there, Bill Condon, is one of the nicest people on the planet and funny. So everyone he cast is funny. So it's got humour and wit in it as well. And that's deeply important. I don't think anything lasts without laughs.
I mean, this is obviously the country where I was. I grew up, and my family are here tonight to see the film with me. And um, yeah, it's incredibly special. You know, you work on something for so long, and you're just desperate to for people to see it and and to get it out there in the world. I think that it's so joyful. It's so romantic. It's so funny. It's so deep. It's at moments really frightening. I think it's kind of one of these films that is just really universal. Yeah, it just fills you with joy. I mean, you, you go and watch it and you come out just feeling fuller for having seen it. I just think that if you love the original, then we really fill in parts of the backstory. There's more depth, there's more detail, and um, I think that if you're a fan, then there's kind of, there's more to enjoy. For me, it's just that she's so non-judgmental. She is able to see past Beast's exterior and and, and even his, you know, his bad temper, frankly, and to see that there's kind of a vulnerable and um, loving man underneath and, um, or human even, and I think that people could learn a lot from Belle. It all centres, doesn't it, around uh, Belle, the, the, the beauty. And uh, it hasn't just gone to a pretty uh, young actress whose main quality is blandness, and that you've got a feisty girl, and that's appropriate. I mean, Belle is such a person. She's got a mind of her own and, and uh, a wit of her own, and uh, she's uh, uh, a straightforward, no-nonsense sort of person, and... Uh, Hence, it's very attractive when she, we see her falling in love. We fall in love with her, really. I mean, I think that so much of what defined LeFou in the original animated classic was, he was a character that was almost created for the animated form, right? He had his teeth knocked out, he had animals sitting all over his head. Um, so we definitely needed to go beyond that uh, to create a live action version. And Bill Condon, our brilliant director, was so open to that exploration. And I think um, there's some surprising elements to this LeFou. He definitely, it, it, everything isn't what it first appears to be. And he's got a, a journey along the way that I think causes him to ask questions. That was the selling point to me, is bringing a song by Howard Ashman and Alan Menken to life uh, on the silver screen was, that's a dream come true. I was 10 years old when the movie was released and I remember sitting in the theater and seeing the audience applaud at the end of Be Our Guest and Gaston and even Beauty and the Beast and that was a very unusual thing back then. So now, being able to, you know, creative for a new generation uh, with living, breathing performers. Um, hopefully this will be as definitive a classic for my kids and that generation as that movie was for me. I remember the day that I walked into the ballroom to watch Dan and Emma uh, perform the waltz. And I remember I, got, I just got goosebumps and I started to tear up because it's such an iconic moment. And seeing that moment play out before my eyes was magical. Each of these characters is a little bit deeper, a little bit richer, uh, given the benefit of having that amazing movie come before it and, and you know stand as a platform for what we did. I think the expansion of the musical numbers is also uh, pretty incredible and hopefully those songs are added to the Disney canon and kids are singing them 25 years from now. I knew that with Bill Condon and, and this ridiculous all-star cast that there was an opportunity to create something very special and we all felt the responsibility to do everything that we could to make sure that we delivered on that promise. Tonight is going to be very special because it's the first time I will have seen this with an audience and this movie is made for audiences. It's not a small movie that deserves to be seen just on the television, you know, and I think that um, seeing these numbers and seeing these characters, seeing these dances, seeing these sets brought to life and sharing it with everybody, this is what we've been waiting for. This one's been an especially long 
time in the process, um, like what is it, like 18 months altogether since we wrapped the movie. So um, yeah, we've all been dying to talk about it. We're very proud of it. and. It's uh, it's very special, and everyone we know that's seen it has already like loved it already. Well, it has some beautiful messages in it. I mean, it, there's there's a very strong female lead, which has been brought into the 21st century in a very different reimagining by Emma, who's done an extraordinary job, um, giving her uh, you know a real a real track of an independent woman, and it's wonderful to see. Um, there's also some very clear messages of never judge a book by its cover, you know. Don't be scared of what you don't know. Uh, don't fear it. And dig a bit deeper and find the truth and uh, what might be a little scary on the outside, outside, you know. And love conquers all. You only take on a role like Gaston if you feel like you're going to have fun playing him, even though he is dastardly and uh, self-absorbed to such a level, it's extraordinary. But it's fun, you, you know. You, He's a larger-than-life narcissist, and um, but he's also quite charming, and uh, so I tried to play both aspects as much as I could, and um, I hope people can laugh at him as much as hate him by the end of the film. Josh is funny whether he's got a script or not. I mean, he makes us all laugh. He's he was a one, he was a joy to work with, and we had so much fun. I mean. You can't really have a Gaston without a LeFou and vice versa. They, they play off each other and they rely on each other for a lot in the film, you know. Um, support, ego massaging, um, and being part of the, the gang. And they, they, we had a lot of fun playing with that dynamic and uh, giving it a much more depth than the animation has. And that was really fun to do as well. I've been trying to work out which, if there's a project where I should, uh, you know, pursue so I can use my singing ability on screen. And uh, this one was it, this one was it. And it just all made total sense. It was a magic moment. And um, it's just very nice to merge my singing career with my acting career, which has almost been as equal amount of time now. So uh, yeah, it's a very special moment for me. It gives a lot more backstory than uh, the old one did, and I think that helps for people who haven't really seen it. She was really nice. She really took me under her wing. It was so fun. It has absolutely everything, so uh, princesses, battles, castles, beasts, it, it's got it all. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous film, as, you, as you'll see, people will see. Uh, I think it takes that wonderful film from the 90s and brings it to a whole another level for, for a new generation. And that's one of the reasons you do them, because you want to make movies that... That's one of the reasons we make all movies, in a way, because they last forever. But also, um, but also to make a movie like this, you know the kids are going to be watching it, and it's nice to be a part of that. When I walked onto the set for the first time, I've been in a lot of movies, big movies, and when I walked onto that set the first time, it took my breath away. The, the ballroom uh, is extraordinary. All fairy tales are really they're, they're expressions of our greatest fears and our greatest fantasies. Um, and I think the, there's a very strong female character at the center of this, which I think is really, really wonderful and great for kids to see. Um, but it's, it's, it plays on all of so many of our fears, the fear of, uh, uh, the, the fear of being trapped, the fear of being of people's fears of people who are different. Uh, and it's very much about, about vanity and how we view ourselves and what we think is, is important and what really is important is what's within. I think they'll feel all the things that they felt when they saw the original film, but I, I think they'll feel them ten times over.